Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And this time we're going to be looking at creating something that looks a bit like this. Now I don't know exactly what you'd call it, it's a project that developed out of something completely different, but enough of you liked the look of it, so I thought I might as well go ahead and do a tutorial anyway. So let's uh, jump in and get started. I've got a new project here, it's 1920-1080, duration is 10 seconds and the frame rate is 24. What we're going to be starting off doing is making some elements, um, and I want to make these square, so what I'm going to do is make my project height 1920 so I've got 1920 by 1920 and I'm going to come to the library command 2 generators and I'm going to apply the clouds generator let's zoom out a bit let's come down and select the rectangular mask and let's draw a mask that's roughly like that let's center it up F4 to come to its controls and we'll set a feather of 300. Next what we want to do is to animate the rectangular mask. So F1 for its properties, to open the position, click on the X value and right click and we're going to add parameter behavior ramp. We're going to set the ramp start value to minus 1400 and the end value to 1400. And let's just set an end offset value of 120, which will make our animation finish at 5 seconds, bearing in mind we're 240 frames long. And you'll notice that we're just slightly encroaching at the beginning and end. So I'll come to F1 for the transform, and I'll just reduce the X scale till it disappears off the end. And we're completely clear at either end. Next I'm going to add a, a color solid, so command 2 for the library, generators, color solid, add that to the group, move it behind the clouds, F4 for its controls, click on the color swatch and set that to white. Then I'm just going to increase the X scale of this a bit, let's go up to 250 just to, uh, so we've got plenty to play with, uh, and I'm going to click on its X position, right click, add parameter behavior link, and I'm going to link it to that animated rectangular mask. I just want to change the X offset here, reduce the value like so, till that disappears behind the middle of the clouds. So now if I play through that, got clouds on the leading edge and the frame ends up filling with white having started on black. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more complexity to the clouds layer. First of all I'm going to add a new group just above it, command shift N and drag the clouds into that. And I'm going to call this edge wipe and this top group here I'm going to call main wipe and it'll become obvious why later on. So I'm going to select the edge wipe group, command 2 for the library, filters from the distortion category up here I'm going to select underwater right down there at the bottom, drag that all the way up onto the edge wipe group. I'll also come down to the stylized category while I'm at it and I'll select crystallize and apply that just above the underwater. So F3 for the inspector. I'm going to set the underwater size to 1, the speed to 0, and the refraction all the way up to 200. And because I've got a little bit of strangeness on the edges, I'm going to hit the repeat edges button, and that just fills in those gaps at the top and the bottom. The crystallize, I'm going to set the speed to 0, and the size to 25. And now I've got something that looks like that. And you're probably asking yourself what on earth that is meant to be. But
but as I've indicated by my naming there, it's a wipe that we're going to be using as we build the rest of the project. And it's a wipe that's got a, an interesting organic looking edge. Okay, so let's close up that group. Let's hide it in fact. And let's make a new group, Command Shift N. And let's call this Circuit Board. And Command 2 for the library. Generators. Again, we'll select Clouds and add that to that Circuit Board group. F4 for the Clouds controls. Let's set the speed down to 0. Let's twirl open the gradient and drag the black tab in and the white tab in so we get something nice and sharp like that. Then I'm going to come down to the layer strength sliders here and I'm going to set the first three all down to zero and layer four strength I'm going to set to 0.6. So we've got something that looks like that. Next I want to add a lot of filters to this circuit board group. So command two for the library, filters, we're in stylize here and I'm going to select circles and apply it to the group and I'm just going to make a duplicate of that because I want two instances so command D to make a duplicate of that. Still inside stylize I'm going to select half tone and drag that above the circles. Again from the same category I'm going to select hatched screen and drag that above half tone. I'm going to select line art, drag that above hatch screen. And I'm also going to come to the glow category and add a glow. Then what we're going to do is select the clouds, command shift M to add an image mask. And we're going to drag our main wipe group into the image mask well. F4 for the image mask controls. I'm going to set the source channel to luminance. So now we've got something that does look very strange indeed. Let's make some changes to some of these uh, filters that we've applied here. The first circles filter, I'm going to set the uh, size to 36 and the fall off to zero. The second instance, I'm going to set the size to 70 and the fall off to 0.3 and I'm also going to set its mix value to 75. That's the circles copy. Moving on to the half tone, I'm going to set the scale to 10 and the contrast to 0.99 and the mix I'll set down to 10. Come to the hatch screen, set the angle to 30 the scale to 100, the skew to minus 0.6, contrast I'll increase to 0.99 and the mix value I'll set to 10. Keep bearing with me on this. Uh, then the line art filter is, is one of the most important filters in this whole operation. We'll set the thresholds to 0.15 the smoothness to 0.1 and we'll turn the paper opacity down to zero and we'll set the ink color from black to white. And now we've got something that looks like that. And we'll just come to the glow radius and we'll set that to two. And the final part of this process is that we need to select the clouds. Command 2 for the library, filters. We'll come down to stylize again and we'll select pixelate and we'll apply that to that clouds layer. F3 for the inspector and we'll set the scale to 60. And now the result looks something like that. That's not looking quite the way I want it to, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the Clouds Generator controls. And I'm just, just going to reset these uh, black and white locations. So I'll set the black to 35 
and I'll set the white location to 50 and that just tightens up the whole design. You can see how just adjusting that will make quite a, quite a radical change to, to how it actually looks. The other thing I want to do is I want to clear away the edges. So I'm going to reduce the width and height both down to 1900. So 1900, 1900. And now I get a pattern around the edge that's also clear of the edge. So it means it's much easier for me to, to tile these objects up together and they won't look as though they've been chopped off at the edges. But before we move on, I'd like to, to add a little bit more interest to the leading edge of the animation. So I'm going to select the circuit board group and hit K to make a clone. I'm going to set the blend mode of this to add, and you can see that's already brightened it up quite a bit. I'm going to add an image mask by hitting Command Shift M. And if you remember our main wipe group had an element in it called edge wipe. So I'm going to drag that edge wipe into the mask source well. I'm going to make sure I turn it back on again because obviously it automatically turns itself off if you forget to do that, like so. And I'm going to set the source channel again to luminance. And then I'm just going to borrow this glow from the circuit board and add it to that clone layer. So I'll hold down the Alt or Option key and drag it onto the clone layer, making a copy. Let's reduce the threshold, I think, down to about 0.3. And the radius, let's really bring it up maybe to around 60. And if I turn that on and off, you can see, zoom in as well, you can see I've got a much more electric leading edge to my design. So that's our circuit board done. Really what we need to do is, is render out a few options of that and just varying some of the parameters. I would probably go in and you know maybe adjust some of the layer strengths or something just to get different looking circuits or even you know adjust the horizontal or vertical scale of these till you get something you like. I mean obviously this is not remotely a real circuit board but once it's all composited into our final uh, scene it'll it'll look pretty nice I think. So I'll, I'll leave you to create two or three options of that that you can use. So there are three more elements that I want to make before we go on to compositing our main scene. So we'll make a new group, Command Shift N, and this one I'm going to call Boxes. Let's just close down the other groups and hide them. So with that Boxes group selected, I'm going to come to the library, Command 2, I'm going to come to Generators, and I'm going to add a cellular generator to that Boxes group. Then I'm going to come to my Filters, and here under Stylize, I'm going to select Circles, and I'll apply that to the cellular. Let's come to the Inspector, F3, set a size of 40 and a fall off of one. And that gives me that result. But what I actually want to do is hit this invert switch, which gives me something much more interesting. And you'll see that instead of getting circles, I get squares with the circle inside them. And that's the secret to this one. So I want to add another filter just to bring this to life properly. Command two to come to the library still in the stylized section I'm going to select edges and I'm going to apply that above the circles. F3 for the inspector and let's set the intensity to 3 and that's automatically created this really interesting looking flickering box affair. What I might just do is come down to the generator itself and as we did with the clouds earlier I'm just going to shrink the edges in so set a width and a height of 1900. And that gives me just a bit of air around the edges, which will make life a little bit easier. Again, you want to be rendering out this boxes layer as an element to bring into our final scene. But for now, let's close it up and I'll assume you'll do that on your own. Let's make a new group, Command Shift N, 
and this one we'll call lines. We'll come to the library, generators, and we'll select caustics and apply that to that group. Let's come to the controls for the caustics and I'll set a height of 2155 and a size of 0.12, speed of 0, refraction of 200 and I'll set the brightness to 50. Then I'll come to the library, command 2, filters, distortion and I'm going to look for scrape and I'll apply that to that caustics. F3 for the inspector. I'm going to set this Y value to minus 1135. I'll zoom out a bit. You'll see I've created an interesting striped pattern. And in order to give that a little bit of animation, I'm going to come back to my caustic speed and I'm going to set that to 0 0.02. And if we zoom in and press play, you'll see that gives just a little bit of movement to those lines. What we're going to do is also come to the lines group, command 2 for the library filters. We're going to come down to stylize and again we're going to apply the edges filter to the group. F3 for the inspector. We'll set an intensity of 3 and let's just turn the mix value to 85. And that's, if I turn that on and off, you'll see that I've now just thinned out those lines quite a bit. Actual fact, I think I will set that caustic speed down to 0 0.001. There you go. That's what I want. There's just so little movement in there, but the edges filter is, is picking that up and giving me this nice flicking effect. So that's the lines group, and again I would advise you to render that out as an element and call it lines. So let's hide that and let's make a new group, Command Shift N, and this is our last one, and we'll call it Waves. So for this we're going to come to the library, Command 2, Generators again, and we're going to look for Stripes, and we're going to apply that. And we're going to hit F4 to come to its controls. We're going to set the size to 5. And then we're going to come back to the library, Command 2, Filters. We're going to select the Distortion category, come all the way down, and we'll look for Underwater, and we'll drag that onto the Stripes Generator, and hit F3 for the Inspector. We'll set the size to 0.5, the speed to 0, and the refraction to 40. And again, because we've got gaps on our edges, we'll hit repeat edges and that sorts out that problem. Now the waves is not going to be animated so this time all you need to do is save current frame and you could save it as a JPEG or a PNG or I recommend a JPEG so save that out as waves. So just to run through you'll be saving out waves, you'll be saving out lines, you'll be saving out boxes, and you'll be saving out the circuit board, preferably in three or four different options. And while we're at it, let's also save out the main wipe, because I think we can find a use for that as well. So once you've saved all those out, let's reconvene to assemble the main project.